is the EXO Podcast. I am Brent Evans, and with me today, as always, is Sean and Caitlin. Hey, everybody. What's up, Brent? Not much. Another great podcast coming at you today. We are talking about... Dun, dun, dun. In-laws. In-laws. Oh, yeah. Get the word law in there, too. It's like a real serious word. Unless you're one of those that says in love. It's my mother in love. It's Ex- my father in love. Aww. No, we're talking about in-laws. This is something that you know people talk about reasons for divorce in marriage. And in-laws is not the top of, of the list, but it is one of the reasons why people cite they get divorced because they just can't stand their in-laws. That's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, sometimes it could be great, right? But it, there absolutely are plenty of opportunities for there to be like some serious tension, mm-hmm. right? There's these lines in the sand and mm-hmm. then how far do we let them cross it, right? Before all of a sudden someone's offended or someone's frustrated. So it, it's a serious deal. It is a serious deal. Yeah. And you fall in love with somebody and you, you pursue them and you love them and you get married to them. And then you get to have their whole family involved mm-hmm. at the same time. Sometimes you didn't sign up for all of that and mm-hmm. you get it and you don't know what to do with it. And creating those boundaries is difficult mm-hmm. because you have a set of parents that you've known your whole life and now they're wanting to be involved in your marriage. And that's not a good thing if your spouse isn't okay with it. And then sometimes, like for for example, I work for my parents, and so I'm with them all the time. So my spouse has to put up with her in-laws around a little bit more than some people do. Mm-hmm. And we do have a great situation where we can deal with it. My parents are marriage experts, so it kind of helps to <laughs> yeah. throw their teachings back in their face if they ever get out of line. <laughs> uh, no, but we have a great relationship with them. But some people just do not get along with their in-laws because they're always crossing the boundaries. And, and y'all have in-laws? <laughs> <laughs> we do, and we love them. All yeah. right. Well, that's what we're talking about today. And coming up on the podcast, we have an interview with Steve and Jan Trapton. These are actually uh, marriage counselors. They work with a lot of couples at the Hideaway Experience, but they're also uh, parents of children who are married, so they're in-laws themselves. They're going to have some great insight for us coming up. But first, date night. We talk about this every week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have to have one. Have to have one. Hey, listen, go to getdatebox.com, use the promo code EXOPODCAST, and you'll get your first month for free. All you have to do is pay $5 for shipping and handling. Please take advantage of this offer. It will really help your marriage. And coming up, Here's a clip from my dad. Hey, this is one of our EXO conferences. You're listening to my father talk about me. It's not all true. There's two sides to every story. <laughs> but enjoy this clip from the conference. So let me talk about some of the challenges of prioritizing your marriage for just a minute. First would be parents or in-laws. And parents and in-laws are such a blessing, unless they're not. And uh, <laughs> you know, we have five grandchildren. Our son, Brent, is married to Stephanie, and she, she'll be around here today. Our daughter, Julia, is married to Corey. They have, our, our daughter has twin girls. They're 15 years old. Our granddaughters, Abby and Elle. And then Brent and Stephanie have three kids. Now, we lived two doors down from Brent and Stephanie for five years. Literally, there was one house between us. We lived two doors down. We never had a problem because we never went to their home in five years without an invitation. That was the rule. We just don't go to their house without an invitation. Now, they were in our house all the time and stole all of our stuff. (laughs) And that's okay. It's okay if they do it to you, you just can't do it to them. But my my mom and dad, when when we first got saved, uh, Karen's Karen's, uh, dad was a little bit of an issue. He's kind of a type A personality. And he would kind of talk to Karen like she was a little girl. And uh, one time he was talking to her in kind of a demeaning manner on the telephone. And I grabbed the telephone out of Karen's hand and I said, this is my wife. You don't talk to her like that. And he pushed back at me and said, she's my daughter. I'll talk to her any way I want to. And said, no, you won't. She's my wife. Now, we got along great after that. Is, but I had to kind of let him know, you can't talk to her any way you want to. Okay. Then with my mom and dad, they were not saved. They got saved later on. They were not saved when we got married. So we would let them have the kids and we would say, they can't watch this show. They can't watch these cartoons. They can't do this. And they thought that we were too strict and they thought we were crazy. Okay. And, uh, and so they would pretend that they kept our rules. But later our kids said, Mama and Papa, let us do anything we wanted to do. <laughs> it was a free reign. So, you know, we had a little issues like that. Some people have really big issues with parents and in-laws. And, and here's the point, with parents and in-laws, you want to be, honor them and respect them, but don't let them violate the boundaries of your relationship through force of personality. Let me give a caveat to that, and that's this. If you're taking money from your parents, they get a little bit more of a say. If you're living with them, they get a lot more of a say. If you don't want them talking to you, move out and get your own place and get off the payroll. That's how you can say that. But, but, but to say, 
We have, we have to be at a place where other people aren't intruding. Let me say, if your parents and in-laws are taking too much of your time, or if they're intruding into the decision-making and the parenting of the family, it will greatly impact your spouse. Rachel Macy Stafford. This girl is a New York Times bestselling author, and she wrote an article for Thrive Global, and that article is called The Six Words You Should Say Today. And in this article, she talks about how she was reading about this study that was done over three decades. This was a big study about college athletes, and they were asked what their parents said to them that made them feel great, amplified their joy during and after their sport, sporting event. And what was so interesting is that overwhelmingly over those 30 years, their response was what was that they were blessed the most when their parents said, I Show me the money. <laughs> no, I love... <laughs> <laughs> yes, show me the money. They were the most... They experienced the most joy when their parents said, I love to watch you play, or mm. I love to watch That's you... Good fill in this blank. And so in this article, Rachel's talking about how she started to apply this, this reading this impacted her. She started to apply it in her own family and said it to her husband. He, she left him a list saying, I love watching you play with our kids. I love uh, watching the way you work with your employees, things like that. She started saying it to her kids too. And that she was contemplating how normally may, she might give more advice or suggestions after they did something or she might encourage more, or use mm -hmm. a lot of words, but that applying this one phrase, I love watching you do this, really blessed her kids, really blessed her husband. It, it, it was more of a, I see you, I see what you're doing. And instead of making a suggestion or even encouraging you in what you're doing, it was a blessing. It took the pressure off of the performance to just say, I love watching you mm -hmm. do this. I thought it was cool. I'm going to start trying it in my own life. It's great. Yeah. I think it's real powerful because it's kind of like you're just adding value to the person right. rather than just what they do. But mm -hmm. it's like you value them and you're participating with them. And for, for me, I, when I kind of read it, I was just in my mind, I was convicted in the sense that I, I usually say thank you. Hmm. Or you're doing a great job, you know, so I am referencing either what they've done or what it is that, but the overall experience of saying, I love to watch you, that's, I think it's phenomenal. Yeah. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's convicting. I mean, I have a daughter that plays soccer and afterwards, I'm always talking to her about what she could have done better. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, next time do this, do that. And um, I'm not a, I'm not a monster parent. Uh, after one of the games mm -hmm. this season, I heard a parent just go off on his daughter like, if I was your coach, I would run you guys. Uh, I would get you guys. It was just laying into her. I'm like, they're 10 years old. This isn't for the, the World Cup. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I found myself going, you know, I should just tell my daughter, I just love watching you play. Mm -hmm. like, That's cool. It's, nothing gives me more joy than just to see you having right. uh, fun playing sports. And she talks about how it just kind of took the air out. She just felt the relief of her kids, the relief of her husband, just say it wasn't about what I did or how I did it. You just enjoy watching me do what I love to do. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Next up, okay, this is something that I'm pretty passionate about, and it's, it's a topic that we've talked about before on the podcast. This article is from The Federalist, and it's called The Research Proves the Number One Social Justice Imperative is Marriage. And we've talked about this before. Marriage is in decline, particularly in low-income classes. There's a class divide, and that lower class is not getting married. We've talked about the implications of that. But this article has a lot of really interesting information about how, if we could all get behind marriage as a social justice cause, how it could change everything, and that really marriage is the most important issue. So it talks about how there's an irrefutable mountain of research that's shown that marriage strongly boosts every important measure of well-being for children, women, and men, and this is economically across all borders, that marriage matters more than income and race. They have a quote in the article that says, the proliferation of single parent households accounts for virtually all of the increase in child po poverty since the early 1970s. And there's research to back that up. And it talks about how it's trendy these days, especially in my generation, these millennials, we like to get behind causes and social justice is a term that's thrown around right. all over the place. All over the place. But marriage isn't a trendy social justice cause. It's, mm -hmm. it's not even really considered a cause. And this is something at Marriage Today we've talked about a lot. We want people to see marriage as a cause Absolutely. that's worthy of fighting for. Um, but this, I would encourage you to go online if you can and really read this because it, it has some great information about getting behind marriage as a social justice cause. And it's really saying that if you care about inequality, you should care about marriage. Mm -hmm. It's good. These kinds of articles get me excited about what we do because it just showcases that if people will understand the value and the importance of marriage, mm -hmm. it will help their life. 
and it'll give them a better satisfaction in life, mm -hmm. and it'll help society. It'll, all, it'll fix all the problems that we currently have in our society. Right. You know, right now there's all these, um, you know, uh, men now being accused of, you know, sexual yeah. mis misconduct and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you look at the breakdown of the family as a, as a cause of that. There's so many things happening in our society right now that if you could just get people to have a healthy marriage that they're fully invested in right. and that they're getting, you know, um, the benefits of, full, yeah. full benefits of, but they just don't have the teaching or the, or the, the experience or they think because, you know, they're low income mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, they get pregnant, they mm -hmm. uh, out of wedlock and then typically the man bolts or they're forced to have an abortion. Just things start spiraling out yep. of control right. so quickly for them. But if you can get them to a place where they can get a healthy marriage started and both kind of start the, the, the relationship off the right way. Right. It even said shotgun weddings. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if there's a shotgun wedding, that even helps their chance of success. Right. Even if you do get pregnant, but you get married before the baby comes, yeah. your life's going to be so much that better was, because of it. That is literally our scenario. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated high school. She was pregnant. Um, got married in September. My son came out in December. And mm -hmm. so we, we did that. And I look back and now it's almost, you know, it's 19 years mm -hmm. and we're still going strong. But and what if you hadn't? What if you hadn't gotten married? I mean, and she had been a single mom and what would oh, that have meant for her? Would she have been in poverty? You just, you don't yeah. know. Yeah, but I, I can also identify with some of those concerns, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, income, you know, how we're going to make this work, the inexperience and all the rest of those, you know, those fears that were out there. I can honestly say that both of us, we were saved. We made our mistakes and everything else like that. But what kept us together and what anchored us was the fact that we believed in marriage. Mm -hmm. And we believed that if we made this vow before God, that it wasn't just going to be my wife and I or just us and our child, but it was going to be God, the unifier, you know, mm -hmm. who would keep us together. And it's because of that that we're still together to this day. Like that's something that I think is, is paramount for the success within our marriage is that we really do believe mm -hmm. that God will keep homes together. He'll keep husbands and wives together and develop their children. One of the words, as you were reading that off and kind of going through some of the stats, one of the words that jumped up in my mind was support. Mm -hmm. I feel like when a, a husband knows that he has his wife, it may not be perfect, but if he can know that, that she has his back. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a wife. If, it, if she constantly has someone who's encouraging her and then children, there's just support there. And so it does fuel success in so many other different areas of our lives, economically and so on and so forth, because you just have support in mm -hmm. your home. So yeah. I think it's phenomenal. Art. It's Your testimony now, I mean, we don't talk about it enough on the podcast, but you and Lynette have a marriage ministry mm -hmm. and helping so many couples out there. Yeah. And and yeah. The, the, the heart of Not Just Roommates is we want to see people build their lives together intimately. We want to see them tied together, unified. And there are so many things that seek to divide marriages today. Um, but the biggest thing that I felt like kept my wife and I together, it was God at the center of it all. And I believe that that's because it's God who created marriage. He's the one who instituted it. You know, the first thing we see in the garden is God, Adam, Eve, and he's developing them and he's giving them vision for life and work to do. And then they can be fruitful and multiply. It's family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's what it is. That's the divine institution. That's the purpose of man on this earth. It's family. And when we lose that aspect, we all of a sudden see all of these moral declines and, you know, um, a poverty and so on and so forth going on in our country. And it's because we devalue marriage. Mm -hmm. And so we need to get it back to the forefront, you know, as it is that God intended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It may not be the trendiest cause, but it's a cause worth it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Imagine a relaxing, adventurous cruise among glaciers, mountains, and charming fishing villages, combined with life-changing marriage teaching from Jimmy Evans. Set sail June 29th to July 6th, 2018, on the EXO Marriage Cruise to Alaska. Unforgettable views, luxurious accommodations, and eight days of romance in one of the most scenic parts of North America. Book your stateroom now at exomarriage.com slash cruise. Hey, this is the EXO Podcast, and we have some special guests today with us, Stephen and Rajan Trafton. Uh, Stephen and Rajan are co-founders of The Hideaway Experience. This is an intensive counseling center in West Texas. They also now have locations in Atlanta and in California. They do many of these. They've been around for 11 years, and they've had so many couples come in and get their marriages saved and restored. Please welcome to the podcast today, Steve and Rajan Trafton. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. guys. Glad to be with you today. Well, we're talking about in-laws on the podcast today, and uh, because y'all are fantastic in-laws to your kids, 
uh, when uh, y'all been doing so much for many couples around the country, uh, I wanted y'all to be able to share some wisdom. But just just quickly tell our podcast listeners about the Hideaway experience, and then also just uh, share a little bit about your family, uh, your kids, and uh, y'all's current status as parents. I'll share about the Hideaway, and then I'll let Regan talk about our kids. It's her one of her favorite subjects. <laughs> but uh, uh, like you said, the Hideaway's been. Uh, been up and going now for 11 years. We've had uh, over over a thousand couples that have attended uh, one of our three locations across the country. And uh, you know what we do is we bring in couples that are in different stages in their uh, in their relationship in their marriage. Uh, you know they come in. We started out originally working with couples in crisis. Uh, many couples fly in to. To one of our locations, divorce papers are already uh, have already been filed. It's kind of a last last hope to see if if there's any way that they can they can salvage their marriage. And you know we have just seen God show up time and time again to bring healing in couples' uh, lives individually. And whenever their lives are healed individually, that's what changes their marriage. Mm. But we have been. We've been very, very blessed to be able to work with with couples all over the country and now being able to offer uh, places more centrally located to, you know, diff- different parts of the country is what we've you know tried to do with our California, Texas and Georgia location. Good. So, yeah, yeah. You just talk about the kids. Sure. Um, outside, of course, of our um, relationship with the Lord and then our marriage relationship, our children is one of my biggest passions. And we have two children. Uh, our daughter is 30 and is married and has two grand, or ha- she has two children. And then our son is 28 and he's married and has a daughter and another daughter on the way. Mm-hmm. So we're soon to be grandparents of four, four littles. That's awesome. So Congratulations. When you talk to me about in-laws or you mentioned the word in-laws, I first think, of how I was with my in-laws when Steve and I married. But now, as we've transitioned into grandparenthood or the next season of life, I guess the biggest advice or the biggest um, suggestion that I would have that worked for me, and this is just totally personal testimony, is uh, letting go of my agenda. You know, I had my, my traditions. I was steeped in my traditions. I wanted them to be a certain way. And I think when you say, you know, when you release your children to be in an, in a marriage and you release them to set up their own household and do things their own way, you really release, you know, your plans for what you have for them on Thanksgiving, on Christmas, anytime. I mean, and we really only want to speak to them when they ask for any kind of advice from us. Good. Rather than handing them advice. Well, you all have a close family. I know you're close with your kids. I was at your son's wedding, and um, I know there's a lot of close relationships there. So h- how did that happen whenever you, you began to dial down those tradition expectations? Uh, was it overnight? Probably not. Were there conversations that were had? What t- Kind of talk people through the, the progress of that and how they can uh, begin to let go of some of those well, clearly the very first thing that happens is I usually go to Steve and say, okay, am I holding on too tightly or am I controlling this situation, you know, um, way more than I should be. And so, first of all, we have a conversation. And, of course, there's always, you know, the option probably needs to be the first option that I need to pray about it and really ask Holy Spirit to guide me in what I'm doing first. And then uh, what we've done, Brent, is we stay very connected with our with our children. We don't necessarily interact with the in-law children as much as we do with our children in telling them our heart about things. Also, you have to, what we do is we look at, you know, how we were as newly married and young parents and how our parents tried to do traditions and things like that and what kind of in-laws they were. So we're always looking at how were we affected by that and how do we want to play that role in our kids life to make sure that there is a a good balance uh that we're still in a place that they enjoy being with us uh but also letting letting them start to uh, create their own family you know it's it's a real balancing act uh you know i think boundaries 
you know, has become such a big word that I like to use the word balance rather than I like to use the word boundaries because boundaries sounds like we're trying to keep people out. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is have a balance of how we can work with all of the family and make it work out that way. Yeah, that word. Yeah, balance. Well, the holidays are coming up. We have opportunity for on our podcast listeners. We, we've been talking about the holidays and um, we, we know that those are times where families get together, but also there's times where it can lead to stressful moments. So y'all are a great example uh, to so many and y'all counsel and coach so many. What are some tips for the holidays for folks to uh, sort of enter into that season? And if there are times where like for you, for example, y'all's kids may be off with their other families um, and y'all might be alone. So what, what does that look like too? So to kind of dive into that as well. We totally understand that there is a another side to this family, you know, for for our kids, and we want to we want to respect and honor that that relationship, uh, you know. So we just have to realize, like we said, you know, sometimes we have to take a, you know, we we're no longer driving the bus. We're we're we're. We've moved from even a passenger, maybe to the back of the bus, sometimes it feels like. But, you know, it's really, we enjoy seeing our kids step up into that role. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of communication. Mm-hmm. And we really, we, you know, we tell people having open communication and learning how to work through issues and expectation is, you know, is the key to, you know, really being able to build success in your, in your family. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Brent, I, I think for my kids to go and be with the other side of their family is just an opportunity for me to allow them to serve their other family, to share with the other, you know, it's just, it's really a, a picture of love mm-hmm. in, in, in more ways than one, just to let go and release that and let them go and be where they need to be. And it, you know, it's just time for us to share now where we didn't feel like we had to do that as much beforehand. You know, the stress of, uh, holidays becomes a, you know, becomes an issue, uh, you know, because my expectation, I, you know, I want my either, either I'm a, I'm newly married and I want to be with my family and you want to be with yours or, you know, you know, you know, that situation or you're the parents and, and, you know, you're hoping everyone shows up and, and they don't want to be there. So, you know, you just have to, you know, you just have to walk into that with everyone offering a lot of grace Mm -hmm. and, you know, and just saying, we're going to have fun and it's probably going to be a little bit messy, but you know, we, we're gonna we're gonna make the best out of it. Mm-hmm. I think that there are some um, unruly expectations sometimes with families and with holidays. And when I say unruly, I just mean we set the bar so high that there's no way that the, that expectation is ever going to be met. And I'm not saying lower the standard. I'm just saying lower your expectation, and then you're you know, so happily surprised when you get to see them maybe for lunch before they leave to go for four days. You know, there's just a lot of ways to manage those expectations as well, Brent. But like Steve said, the communication part is so key. If there's a little bit of a glitch, go ahead and talk about that. I mean, get that out in the open. Yeah. Our daughter-in-law, she was real, real sweet. You know, this weekend we were having having lunch on Sunday and they were leaving going to Dallas to be with her her family for uh, Thanksgiving and and she and Chance looked across and they said so tell us what are what are y'all's expectations for Christmas mm-hmm. you know and we kind of looked at each other like well we want sure to be together and and they said no I mean do you want us down for Christmas do you want us down for two days how long do you want us to be there and it was a really it was a really good time for us to say well this is really what we would like to see but does that work with y'all and they're like We'd love to be there that long. We just didn't know if we were going to be intruding on y'all's time. So, you know, it's just being able to, you know, talk about those things and be able to work work out what really works for, for everyone. That's good advice. Most people don't talk about it. And the thing about holidays is they come every year. And so you, a lot of times you just avoid the conflict until the next year and then you avoid it. And so it just builds up. Uh, and you never have those conversations. So the holidays do bring a lot of stress, and I wanted people to understand that the hideaway experience is a great opportunity for couples who have chronic conflict. And maybe this Christmas or this holiday season is the time where they face the worst challenge they've ever faced. And so they have an opportunity to connect with your ministry, 
which is very uh, specific in how y'all set it up, your curriculum, what you walk people through. Uh, but it's powerful. I think it's an 85% success rate for couples who are in crisis. They come out on the other side. Give people an opportunity to, to connect with you. What, what are some details? What's the phone number and the website? Phone number is 806-290-0055, or they can go to www.thehideawayexperience.com. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the podcast today. You bet. And, thank you uh, all for having you know. I do hope that people take advantage of the of the uh, hideaway experience. And to everyone watching, please, during the holidays, do not do anything without talking to your spouse about how to handle the in-law situation. Go into every situation with a unified front. I like St- Steve's word about having balance instead of boundaries. Just set those, those uh, balances in your marriage and your relationships and everything will go well. We're doing something new on the EXO podcast. Are Y'all we ready for it? EXO Kid Talk. Ooh. Right here in this stack of cards, there are responses from kids okay. that I'm going to read. Real kids? Real, Real responses? Kids. Questions that we asked about marriage and kids responded. Are you all ready? This is going to be great. EXO yeah. Kid Talk starts now. If you could have your own business, what would you sell? Watts says, take footballs and make them into technology. Remote control footballs. Genius. The kid's brilliant. Mm. Come on. Football's of the future. He's going to be a millionaire. Parker says, I'd sell gymnastics leotards. They'd have some sequins and jewels in different colors. Wow. He knows his audience. I like that Parker kid. He's got a lot of spunk. Exo Kid Talk. I don't think I say leotard when I was a kid. I don't think I knew what a leotard was. This is an answer to the question. If you could have your own business, what would you sell? She says, chicken. Both kinds. The kind you eat and the kind that lay eggs. (laughs) <laughs> oh, wow. That's a pretty good idea for business. Brilliant. Bobby says, really expensive Michael Jackson stuff. Clothes, microphones, and making Michael Jackson's knife. Why did we not think of wait, that? If you wait. could sell anything. I was great at first, but stuff. Michael Jackson's knife? It went dark. All of a sudden, the kid's like <laughs> talking about Michael Jackson's knife. <laughs> I, I was great at first, did he? Did he have a famous knife? I don't know. He had a famous monkey. He had famous <laughs> gloves and socks. But I, I just don't I like see... Where his head's at, I don't see Michael with a sword. All right, next question. Why do they call it a honeymoon? Reggie says, because you're going with your honey and usually see the moon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I like it. See some kind of moon. <laughs> Let's keep this G-rated, please. Sorry. Your R-rated talk of moons. Honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why do they call it a honeymoon? Christy says, because honey is kind of a solidly liquid and so is lipstick, and girls wear lipstick. So that's the honey part. The moon part, the moon is made of rocks, and rocks can be any different shapes and sizes, and diamonds are basically rocks, and girls wear diamond rings. So honeymoon. Logic. Wow. Logic. That's deep and Why brilliant. Why would you call it a honeymoon like for real? Hey, Siri. Why do they call it a honeymoon? It says, from mentalfloss.com, where does the term honeymoon come from from a reality show oh wait no that's not right (laughs) (laughs) the that's why you can't believe everything you read on the etymology of the word comes from the old english honey moon honey moon honey reference to honey refers to the indefinite period of tenderness and pleasure experienced by a newlywed couple and how sweet the new marriage is moon meanwhile refers to the fleeting amount of time that sweetness would last So While honeymoon has a positive connotation today, it was first used as a term to warn newlyweds about and waning love. Enjoy it wow. all while. <laughs> all night long. Because in the morning. That is sad. Okay. Wow. I like their answers better. It's so like, horrible. That was, yeah, there is, there's this better. All right, next question on Exo Kid Talk. What do you think your mom and dad do on their anniversary? Jordan says they give out presents and go on dates. That's cute. Yeah. So sweet going to be a good husband one day. <laughs> what do you think your mom and dad do on their anniversary? Well, Ella says they feed pigeons and go to the zoo. <laughs> That's her idea of a good time. Wow. Not pigeons if you want to make zoo. it to your next anniversary. And this person says they go to Toys R Us. No. No. <laughs> there's no Toys R Us involved in my anniversaries. <laughs> Far away from Toys R Us's as we possibly can get. Amen, brother. And the last response from Exo Kid Talk. What do you think your mom and dad do on their anniversary? This kid says they go to the Christmas tree farm, and Christmas trees are fat, and so is the number seven, mm-hmm. if you think about it. Okay. And seven plus three is ten. <laughs> okay. 
That's it. Exo Kid Talk. Seven is fat. Never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. This is the EXO Podcast, and we're talking about in-laws and marriage. Yes, we are. It's an important thing to talk about. It's an important thing to talk about. Uh, we've had an interview with uh, Steve or Jan Trafton, and we've been talking a lot about in-laws today. But one of the things I wanted to mention is I, f- I found a study uh, that had been done, a 26-year-long study, that showcased that whenever couples get married, if the husband is close with his wife's parents in the beginning, they have a 20% chance, better chance of success in marriage. Wow. Hmm. If the wife is close with her husband's parents when they start, they have a 20% chance of divorce, a higher what? chance of divorce because of that. I thought that was interesting. So when you get married, there's a lot of things we talk about with in-laws, but whenever the husband is close with the wife's family, mm-hmm. that's a good thing. I mean, typically that means that he's been accepted into the family. There's a lot of, uh, uh, from, the, from the wife's side, there's a lot of um, warm feelings about having her husband be involved with, mm-hmm. with the family. Women need their families a little bit more. A little bit more, and there's less of a violation from the from the husband's side. So if somebody says something about the kids or the cooking or something like that, the husband's less likely to get offended at the, at the wife's parents because mm-hmm. he's got more security in other places. When the wife is close with the husband's family, and then there's those conversations about how to raise the kids mm. or how to deal with the cooking, that's when things end up having... It more directly relates to her. She feels violated. The boundaries mm-hmm. aren't set as uh, firmly, and whenever they're violated, I don't think there's as much um, uh, buy-in from the husband to defend uh, the, the wife. Typically, he doesn't think it's a big deal, right. and, and it ends up becoming a huge deal to her, and that's why things end up going um, south for those couples. And so I thought that was interesting whenever you start the marriage that way, that... Um, it's it's good to have those conversations up front. If your wife's close with your parents, just say, hey, listen, there might be times whenever we are going about finances or life or whatever it is, and my parents might say something, let's have a discussion up front about how we're going to react to that mm-hmm. Yeah, and what your role is and how I can protect you and make sure that you're feeling safe and secure in this environment. Yeah, I think going into any discussion or environment where any in-law, whether it be just you know parents or you know siblings, we have to go into it with a mindset that says we have to stay unified no matter what. We don't want to be divided on any topic. Um, and so a simple tip that I like to give couples is, you know, have a cold word. There needs to be a cold word established somehow, some way. Um, ours was pineapple. Uh, because <laughs> Yeah. And so it didn't matter what it was. If, if, if all of a sudden, you know, someone was insulting my wife or I was saying something that was embarrassing her uh, or what have you. She can all of a sudden just say, no, I'm thinking about pineapples, you know, <laughs> and it kind of it helped me to know, OK, she's feeling violated in some way, shape, form or fashion. And it really doesn't matter what it is. If she doesn't feel comfortable with it, then I have to respect her more than I do whatever's happening in that environment. Um, I don't know about y'all's families, but mine's. We have mm-hmm. a, um, a history of being really goofy and sarcastic. And so sometimes we can say things that, you know, go a little bit too far Mm -hmm. um, or all of a sudden they start giving tips on what they think we should do with our money or what we should do with our children and so on Mm -hmm. and so forth. And so that gets like really personal. So for us, the code word was huge. And then I think secondly, uh, we had this incident that happened early on in our marriage. Our second child was being uh, was born and unbeknownst to me, my mother and uh, sister, they kind of had this mindset that said, okay, when the kid comes home from the hospital, they were supposed to wear a gift that came from my family. Mm-hmm. And so they they took it really personally on the day that we were about to leave the hospital. And y'all got to picture this. We're in the delivery room. We're, we're getting ready to go. My wife's laying in the bed, just had a baby. And all of a sudden, they saw the outfit that we had on them wasn't the one that they purchased, that mm-hmm. they were God ordained to leave the hospital with, you know what I mean? And they freaked out about it. And I was like, okay, but we already have her dress. We're about to leave. And they were like, no, she has to go in the clothes. Next thing you know, they were literally going off. I mean, yelling and and cussing out my wife because, you know, she made the decision to keep my daughter dressed in what we had her in. So what do you do in that situation? In that particular situation back then, I, I just, I made the decision to say, I saw my wife she was looking like she was really hurting. I just told my, my mother and my sister they had to leave. Mm-hmm. And that was tough because it was it put me in this position where I was like, I'm loyal to my mother. I'm loyal to my sister, my family. Mm-hmm. And anybody else that's out there, you know how this is. I mean, you really want to protect kind of, I grew up with you. You raised me. You know, you're my family. But now I've made a commitment to leave and cleave, right? For this mm-hmm. purpose shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And that cleaving, we're one. 
and they were violating that oneness. And so I, I mm-hmm. told them they needed to get out, you know. Mm-hmm. And so as difficult as that moment was for me, we've since gotten over it. Everything is good between, you know, my wife and uh, my mother and sister. But one of the reasons why I think things are good is from that moment on, we made a decision to say, you know what, it's us. Mm-hmm. And it's not a matter of um, wanting to cause dissension or divisiveness outside of our home with our in-laws, but we also, we, we've drawn a line where we say, you know what, you have to respect what it is that we have. Right. And so we're going to make our financial decisions. If we ask for your wisdom, we'd love to receive it. If you have something you'd like to give it, mm-hmm. we'll listen to it, but it doesn't mean that we have to do it. Right. It's the law of priority mm-hmm. that we've talked about before. It's you're my priority and then everything else falls under that. Yeah, absolutely. And so I would encourage anybody out there, if you... If you're at a place where you feel that tension when it comes to in-laws, you got to set some clear-cut boundaries. Mm -hmm. They have to be established to me between you and your spouse uh, privately Mm -hmm. uh, before you go out publicly engaging. When you have people asking you for money, um, they have an emergency. Well, how much money is going to be available, you know, to be given to them? Or should we give in this instance at all? Mm -hmm. You know, somebody gets kicked out. All of a sudden, they need a place to stay. Do you Mm -hmm. let them stay with you? Well, they're family. Well, we have a budget, Mm -hmm. you know, and we have plans. We may have kids. How does that affect the whole household? And so there's some serious things to take in consideration. And each home is different. But there needs to be agreement on, you know, what those boundaries will be, Mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to the relationship. And so um, the The other thing that I think is that there's a difference between honoring mother and father and obeying mother and father. And so I can honor my dad. I can honor my mom and her dad and, you know, mom. I can give them honor and respect them, which is what that means. Honor your mother and father. But once we're married, right, if they speak into our lives, we, we respect it. We have the right to listen to it, take it into consideration. But I don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. And so I think that a lot of people feel this deep conviction to still do whatever mom and dad tell them to do after they're now married. I'm like, look, you grown. You have to make your own decisions and you guys have to live with it. And yet at the same time, be willing to lovingly tell your parents, hey, I respect you. I appreciate what you've said and all that you've done for me. But now um, we're going to make our decisions and kind of go our own way. It's good. Yeah. Sure good. This is the holiday season. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's yeah. a lot of opportunity for interaction with in-laws. And yeah. they say that <clears throat> a lot of marriage problems spike around the holidays because, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just the stress of the holidays, but it's just the interaction with families. It's a lot of places to be, especially if you've got grandparents or in-laws who are married, you have been married multiple times. You've got a mm-hmm. lot of people to see, a lot of people to fit in. It can cause strife. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be a happy time, but it ends up being not a happy time. Mm-hmm. And so talk about it with your spouse. Talk about what's going to happen during the holiday season in advance come up with a game plan. I mean, whose houses are you going to go to for the holidays? What's yep. going to happen in those environments? How long are you mm-hmm. going to stay? I think one of the biggest conversations that Stephanie and I have is, hey, once we're there, how long are we going to stay? What are, yep. what, what are we going to do while we're there? What's the plan for the kids? Mm-hmm. Um, how can we make this a better time for both of us right. in this situation? Me being empathetic about what it's like to be around my family and her being empathetic about what's like for me to be around her family. Mm-hmm. And uh, even when we go over to her parents' house for like Christmas or holidays, a lot of times it's easy for me to kind of hang out with her brother or her dad, play cards or something, do something fun. Well, I see her over there and she's doing all the work, you know, mm-hmm. she's yeah. cooking and helping with the kids and stuff like that. So even when I'm at her parents' house, a lot of times I have to be sensitive about how uh, things are in those environments. And so talk about it. High communication is always the best policy yeah. Yeah. when it comes to that. Yeah. And I, I'd say to that, especially when we're talking about going over, you know, in-laws house for the holidays and all that. Here's the thing. At some point, you're going to have to recognize that you're not going to be able to please everybody every time. Right. Like somebody's going to be disappointed. Somebody's going to be upset. And so if you're trying to walk on eggshells, you know, to try to appease however much time they want you over their house. I mean, we would travel out of town. We would drive to St. Louis, you know, 10 and a half hours. We would get there. And I mean, we hadn't even taken a rest. If we my dad's house was the closest. And so if I stopped at his house depending on which relatives find out that we went to his place Mm -hmm. first, that may have created some tension. Whose house were we going to stay up? I mean, it was, everybody wants to love on you, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all in good fun until Mm -hmm. all of a sudden you have to make a choice. Your choice is going to influence somebody one way or another. So I agree with you. You and your spouse come into agreement, hey, this is how much time we're going to be here. Mm -hmm. And that's our decision. And you guys live with that. And you love on people real hard while you can but you own what it is that you all have chosen. And I think that that's a very powerful position for a husband and wife to be in. Yeah. It's, it's, it's big. We see so many times couples that, you know, they, they get in fights. But, I mean, if you can create this environment where your nuclear family, your husband, wife, kids are the main priority, 
Uh, people can make you feel so guilty mm -hmm. about not coming over or not doing certain things. But what we always talk about is just prioritizing that. Let's, let's have, make our, sure our kids have a great Thanksgiving. Make sure they have a great Christmas. Make yep. sure they have an, an, an environment where they can feel loved on and stuff. And you kind of protect them and then protect our marriage. And then from there, you know, if, if, if there are 100 places to visit during the holidays, that happens. You know, mm -hmm. you have to buy Christmas gifts or do certain things. But just make sure you prioritize your marriage. Talk it through. High communication. It's all good. Good stuff today, Sean. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, this was fun. And I think for the holiday season, everyone should have a great time. So y'all pray. Y'all talk to each other and all that good stuff. Um, don't overspend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, enjoy some good food. Yeah. And I know your in-laws subscribe to the podcast, so they do. shout out to them. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Dave. I love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in this week. I hope it's been helpful for you talking about in-laws. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening every week. Please subscribe. Tell your friends. I want you guys to know that we love serving you here at Marriage Today. If you want to take advantage of any of our resources at Marriage Today, we have an offer for you. Use the promo code or the code, checkout code, XO15 when you're on our website, marriagetoday.com, for any of our products. That's just for our podcast listeners, XO15. You get 15% off anything in our store. Please check that out. Take advantage of it. Also, if you're considering an interview or gift uh, to an organization, we are a nonprofit. We exist to help couples succeed in marriage. And if there's something that you're doing uh, in your life that you feel like you can uh, give back uh, to a ministry like this, we would appreciate it. Go to marriagetoday.com and make a donation there. Thank you again. Have a great week. See you next time.